This is the Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk, AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to the Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here on 1150 AM at KKNW, the Saturday, December 20th show. Each week, I share expert advice and inside knowledge on how to- today's events in our local economy can affect your money. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you're listening to a rebroadcast, but you can always call into the show at one 855 411150. Again, that's one 855 411150 or online at themoneyr.com. And I'm so excited to have, not in studio on the phone, but she is just a busy, busy lady, uh, Denise Lonis, founding partner of the Lonis Group. And what are the experts saying about the real estate market and the forecast for 2015? That's what Denise is going to talk to us about. And Denise, I'm, I'm so excited. Thank you so much. I know that you're just crazy busy and at high demand um, for people. So I appreciate you uh, uh, joining in on the show today. Well, this is one of my favorite places to be, and I love chatting with you and all your listeners, so I am thrilled to be able to be here, and I really appreciate you having me. Of course, Denise. And a little bit about Denise. Uh, she's founding partner of the Lonus Group. Denise brings over two decades of experience in the real estate industry with expertise in strategic marketing, business analysis, branding, new home projective planning, product development, and agent broker coaching and training. Denise is nationally recognized as the source for all things real estate. Denise's background in residential real estate and sales management include an impressive list of awards. Denise was recently nominated by Emna News as one of the 100 most influential real estate leaders in the country. Denise is a strong and respected voice in the real estate community. And I know every time, uh, Denise, I have you on studio, it's it's just high demand on their social media platform and people want to listen to your forecasts. And I know this one's just going to be crazy because it is forecasting for next year. And I've, um, as I was bringing you, uh, introducing what was coming up uh, before commercial break and just how a majority of the time you're just spot on with what you're, you're thinking is going to happen in the future. And so I'm just excited to go over this with you. So let's talk, Denise, on how the real estate market, um, it seems to slow down a little bit. What's what's going on? Well, it slowed down, and um, but that is just a very temporary measure. And the thing I'd like to point out is, you know, I'm not an economist, but I have been doing predictions for the last 13 years. I definitely am a real estate analyst, and I analyze all sorts of things. I don't mm-hmm. just analyze what's happening in the Pacific Northwest or in the Seattle marketplace or in Washington State. But in order to really get the flavor of what's going to happen in the following year and the next year, you have to look back in history. You have to look back at events. You've got to look at what's happening globally, regionally, economically, politically, Mm -hmm. uh, health. You have to look at all these things. So I analyze all of these factors. And then from that, I'm able to sit back and make some pretty – I've made some pretty good predictions over the yes. years, and it's only because I do analyze everything, and I analyze from all sorts of sources. So the market has slowed down right mm-hmm. now. It uh, usually does slow down at this time of the year. People yep. are taking time for the holidays, but we're really just taking a breather because the one thing that we still have not um, replaced in our marketplace is new construction. And what's happening is we have recently seen our foreclosures um, just hit rock bottom, which is mm-hmm. a good thing. So the foreclosure crisis is nearing its end, and uh, which is wonderful for the market. But what happens is now that we have taken that foreclosure inventory out of the market, mm-hmm. now that we have taken, you know, now we're back into the busyness of the holiday season, it feels like we've slowed down. However, we were um, in the spring of 2014, we were moving at a pace that was actually not real healthy. There were so many multiple offers. Yeah. Things were going crazy. Prices were um, rising too quickly. And now we are moving into a very much more healthy market, a more balanced market. So while the market has slowed down, it's really just taken a breather. And we're going to have a very robust spring for sure. So Although the market's a little slower, it is not a sign of things to come. It is just really an opportunity for people to rest. But I will tell you that come spring, there are so many sellers out there Mm -hmm. that are thinking that, okay, now I have made back some of this equity that I thought I had lost, so now is the time that I'm going to sell, and we're going to see 
through this whole domino effect of sellers coming into the marketplace with some inventory, which mm-hmm. is good. We need that inventory. Yep. Then we're going to see them needing to um, sell that inventory. They're now going to have an opportunity to buy up. They will be able to sell that inventory to the buyers that need to be buying it. We're going mm-hmm. to see less multiple offers in such a crazy, frantic way that we saw in 2014, but we're moving into a very healthy growing market. We are in a state of growth right now. That is great. Uh, great news, Denise. And what about Puget Sound um, happening with the, the inventory um, right here? Well, so you're t- talking about more inventory coming on the market, so that's good. Yeah, absolutely. So what's going to happen with inventory? Um, first of all, it's a really good thing that more homeowners are expected to sell their homes next year. Yes. And the reason for that is that there's no doubt that we're going to see more buyers entering the market. Mm-hmm. The reason for that is a number of things. First of all, we're going to talk about it a little bit later on, but the millennial generation, that market is coming on very, very strong. Mm-hmm. We have the baby boomers that are settling into um, new homes, different types of homes. We have those people that weren't able to buy because they either weren't qualified, couldn't get qualified, had perhaps lost a home mm-hmm. in 2009 and weren't quite ready. They've been building that credit back. So 2015 is going to see a year where we're going to see some more inventory come on from okay. our sellers that uh, should be, and I'm glad that we have that inventory, but that inventory is still going to be um, consumed by the marketplace. There's no doubt about it. And if we look at the marketplace and we look at the improved job markets, Mm -hmm. whenever you have improved job markets anywhere, that always brings more buyers into the marketplace. According to the the Bureau of Labor, Labor Statistics right now, Nationally, right now, we have the unemployment rate standing at around 5.8. That was the okay. end of November numbers. That mm-hmm. is the lowest number it has been since July of 2008. Wow. That, um, coupled with the fact that we have now stabilized our home prices and those losses that people were seeing, they now have had that appreciation back. And the fact that we've got fewer bidding wars, that's actually going to, um, again, stimulate the market because those Mm -hmm. buyers that couldn't get into the marketplace because maybe they had tried on one home or two homes and they kept losing because they were competing against 10 or 15 or sometimes 20 offers, they left the marketplace. They were disappointed. Mm -hmm. Uh, But now in 2015, they are going to return and they're going to return much more educated. Mm -hmm. They've been down this road before. They know what to do. They know how to do it. They've got their agent in place. They know what they're looking for. So these sellers that are bringing this inventory on are going to see that there's a real sophisticated buyer out there that is going to come in and uh, pick up those homes. So it's going to yeah. be a robust spring. Well, and I always, I always tell people, if a, lot of, it's a lot of times people have a more of an opinion in, um, in what's happening in the employment than they do in real estate. But just letting, I mean, in real estate always fo- follows employment, just as what you said. So what about interest rates, Denise? This is my arena, but I, you know, every expert, um, ha- including myself, has just said for years now that these rates have nowhere to go up but up. And, and with, with uh, quantitative easing and that backing off, I mean, what, what is your prediction in when these interest rates are going to go up? Not that I want them to, but it's like it's, you're, you're kind of like it's got to happen. When is it? Well, you know, the thing is, is that I, I know that we have gotten real spoiled and we, yes. we get excited about these low rates. But mm-hmm. in reality, when an economy is improving the way our economy is, mm-hmm. that is a, a good sure sign or a signal that interest rates uh, should be increasing. It's good. I mean, yep. there has to be a balance there. Mm-hmm. The new rates, because of the fact that we've got this um, job growth and this increased job growth, all those things, uh, the signs are there. Also, the Federal Reserve has indicated that they're going to increase the federal funds rate in 2015, yeah. and that fund rate has a significant effect on mortgage rates. And the federal funds rate has remained near zero since December of 2008, and mm-hmm. I personally expect that the 30-year fixed rate mortgage is going to reach 5% by the end of 2015. I okay. can't imagine it not getting there. Mm-hmm. I just think that, um, you know, that affects a little bit of the affordability index mm-hmm. that some people that would be able to buy more house for their money if the rate stayed the same. But yes. that also, with the, and I'll call it the threat of that or the talk of that or the discussion of that, there again, that stimulates those buyers that are saying, wait a minute, we have risked waiting long enough. Yes. We don't think the rates are going to go any lower. There's mm-hmm. a lot of talk, and we see the economy improving. Things are getting better, so I think it's time to buy. And that's why I'm telling people all over that there are going to be buyers in the marketplace in big numbers mm-hmm. uh, in the new year. There's no doubt about it. And 
the serious buyers are out looking right now. Yes, yeah, and I, I why not? I mean, if there's if there's a keep looking, if there's a house out there that meets your uh, your requirements, the sellers are def, definitely in, in more of a situation that they need to sell. Otherwise, they wouldn't be listing during the holidays. So, Denise, what about the millennium generation affecting the market? Well, there's a, there's a number of things. Um, I just want to address one one quick thing about okay. you know in 2014, what we saw is we did see house prices. Um, rise fairly considerably, mm-hmm. and I'm going to call it in the urban high demand areas. In some places, we saw price increases in the double digits. And uh, one of the things I'm saying for house prices in 2015 is I definitely see that we're going to see a very, very strong increase still in those urban high demand areas okay. because of things like the millennial generation, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. But mm-hmm. overall, I'm predicting a more modest around a 4% house price increase for 2015 across the board. But okay. that's single digit, but there will be double digit uh, increases in certain areas. And we're going to talk about those areas. Let me talk a little bit about the, and answer your question about the millennial generation. Okay. A decade ago, baby boomers made up the largest part of the population. But in 2014, the Census Bureau announced that the millennials are now larger than the baby boomers in numbers. Mm -hmm. And here's what's really interesting. Those millennials are now getting married. They're starting families, and therefore, what do they need? They need housing. And Mm -hmm. more than two-thirds of household growth in the next five years is expected to come from the millennial marketplace. And as the job market improves and as as the millennials start to... Uh, make more income, they start to pay down that student debt, they get themselves more qualified and ready to go, they're eager to buy a home, they're Mm -hmm. eager to set up their families. So one of the things that we're going to see is we're going to see a large surge in this buyer group age 25 to 34, and the demand from the millennial marketplace also is keeping not only pressure on the market, but it's going to help to boost those house prices. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's making builders look a little bit differently at what they're building because the millennials don't want 4,000 square foot homes. They don't want 3,000 square foot yeah. homes. They want hmm. a moderate sized home. They want uh, locations very important. They are, um, it, for them, it's all about uh, convenience. It's all about uh, a smart house, mm-hmm. a well laid out house. So that is really, um, really important. But the millennials are going to really drive the market. And on the tail of those millennials, we still have this really strong base, this baby boomer buyer, and the baby boomers are looking also into these urban metro areas. They are really excited about um, changing their lifestyle a little bit. And uh-huh. in fact, it was just very interesting. Just this morning, um, NAR came out with their list of the top metro areas that are attractive, attractive to those baby boomers. And a lot of those areas have to do with areas that have um, sunnier weather, lower cost of living, mm. um, you know, great lifestyle. And in the state of Washington, for example, we've got areas like Spokane, Tri-Cities, Wenatchee, and then mm-hmm. you've got this wonderful urban, cool, hip lifestyle happening in Seattle and even um, areas where I'm from up in the Bellingham Marketplace, our Fairhaven District. People, uh, those baby boomers are looking for that quality. So we've got a lot of people making a lot of choices about housing. And now that these millennials have topped the baby boomers, we're going to have a very interesting five to seven years in the market. That is so exciting. Denise, thank you so much. And I, you know, next time I, I have a call in with you, I got to do the whole show. Just having you for one segment is not enough time at all. So uh, we'll get you booked back when it works with your uh, your schedule. And just thank you again so much. I, I really appreciate it, Denise. Absolutely. Coming up next on The Money, our long-term care is a hot topic and how you are planning for it. Janet Greenling with Genworth Financial PNW Insurance Services right here on 1150 AM KKNW after the short break.